United Latino uh, Voter Forum, and echoing Paul, I, I do want to salute uh, United Latinos for your third annual forum. Uh, this is obviously uh, a big election year with presidential election uh, and going on down. Uh, so you are to be applauded uh, for your dedicated effort to engage the Latino community in the democratic electoral process, especially the youth. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, the young students here. I hope some of you are from Sacramento State. I understand more will be coming later on today. Um, you know, this reminds me of uh, my own uh, background and experience in Western Kansas. I grew up in Kansas. How many of you have seen a Kansas Chicano before? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking at one. My parents were born in Western Kansas as well. In fact, uh, they were part of the migration uh, from Mexico during the Mexican Revolution when uh, my grandfather was back in the 19, oh, almost 100 years ago, when they went to the Paso, instead of turning left, they went right. Okay? So that's how they ended up in Kansas working on the railroad. Um, but I, I do think that it's really important because these are the types of experiences that sow the seeds for civic awareness, civic engagement, because all of that adds up to full, active citizenship. And that participation that we as uh, Latinos, as you know, citizens of this country, this is really our, our obligation and our responsibility. And so I salute you, I applaud you. Uh, welcome to Sac State and have a great day. Thank you. Okay, now this is better. I don't have to hold the microphone here and I can look. Um, next, now we're going to have Mauricio Leiva come up. You all passed president, and he's going to give us a few words regarding federal policy implications on health care reform. Good morning, everyone. So glad to see all these people here, especially the students. This is extremely important, especially for students. You are the people that we want to reach because the future of this country is in your hands. I want to thank Dr. Sobredo for bringing his class over here. Thank you. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the federal implications on health care reform. Now I selected this topic for a couple of reasons. One of them is that uh, a few days back I thought that health care reform Will be, will be the primary issue in this election. And then uh, all of a sudden they released a poll uh, of uh, female voters and they determined that the most important topic was actually abortion. Uh, health care reform comes somewhere in the second or third position and then jobs, okay? But health care reform is important for all of us. And the federal implications of health care reform is what I want to talk to you about because the decision is in your hands, okay? Who you elect this year for president will make a difference, okay? Uh, we all know that, uh, what do they call the health reform? Uh, it's actually called Special Protection and Affordable Care Act, uh, also known as Obamacare. Mitt Romney said clearly, that he was going to reveal that on day one. And the reason I chose this topic is because he can't do that on day one, okay? Basically, you all know how a law is passed, right? All three branches of government are involved. You got the legislative, the judicial, and, uh, and the executive. Now, the president signed a law that was passed by Congress. The Supreme Court approved it. So this is the bottom line law. Unfortunately, the law didn't have a single vote from the Republican Party. That's not, that's not a problem. The law still passed. Okay? The fact that it didn't have a single vote from the Republican Party just means that there was no cooperation. Okay? And there's a lot of reasons for that. The Affordable Care Act will cost money. Okay? But here's what it provides. Okay? It provides, provides access to comprehensive coverage for all. Now, I work at the Department of Public Health. I'm the director of the Health Fiscal Office by National Board of Health. 
I'm fortunate to work with Mexico. I'm also fortunate to work with, be familiar with Canada's healthcare system. Now, what Mexico, Mexico considers healthcare a human right. Canada has universal care. The United States, which is one of the richest nations in the world, can't afford to cover its citizens because it has money. Okay? So it's up to you who you elect. Uh, we're going to spend money. How we spend the money makes a difference as to who is in the White House. Because let's face it, politics is all about the control of resources. This guy, you know, we're running, he's got 250 million or something like that. He doesn't need the money. But if you get to be president, you have billions and you control billions. And you decide, you make decisions as president, you make decisions what your priorities are for a nation. To me, priority for a nation should be the population of the nation that we live in. Affordable health care will provide the following. Comprehensive access to health care for all. It will prohibit insurance from establishing lifetime limits. Currently, health plans can establish a lifetime limit. If you, if you use your lifetime limit, then you don't have a lot. Okay? It will prohibit insurance, insurance from receiving coverage because you are ill. It will also prohibit insurance from denying coverage because of pre-existing conditions. Okay? Now, a lot of people don't get coverage because they have some kind of chronic ailment. Okay? But the part that I like the best, being that I am a Department of Public Health employee, is that it has a preventive health component. And let's face it, the best way to stay healthy is not to get sick. So preventive health is, is important. So I like this law because it has a preventive health one. Now we have dozen estimates. And according to the estimates from the Atlantic Health Network, more than two million of the states chronically uninsured Latinos will be able to attain health insurance through the public programs and subsidized insurance. Now, California, we're very fortunate in California. I know we, can, we were all sweating it uh, a while back because uh, we didn't know whether the Supreme Court was going to approve Obamacare or not. And of course, uh, the Chief Justice surprised everybody. But we are fortunate to live in the state of California. Because Governor Jerry Brown said we were going to go forward. We have to reform regardless, okay? So we kind of got to start at the head of the game, and we have the California Health Exchange already developing plans, regulations, and all that is going to take care of so that when they open the doors in January 2014, ordinary people like you and me can look on our website and decide which plans to buy. Okay. Now, it's going to be affordable because the idea here is that the more people that buy health insurance, the cheaper it will be. Now, health plans are very expensive. So, I'm glad that uh, this is going to make health insurance more available to more people. But the important thing too, one of the other things that's important about this plan is that you can keep your children up to the age of 26 in your health plan. Okay. Save your money that way. We, have, we will have challenges, no doubt about it. Uh, but along with challenges, we also have opportunities. For example, uh, we estimate that there will be a shortage of healthcare providers, a shortage of doctors, a shortage of nurses, uh, you know, you name it. The infrastructure is going to be, it's going to be stressed. But there is also opportunities because there's going to be a lot of jobs in the healthcare field. I mean, we're here now to train people to get into the healthcare field because that's where the jobs are going to be. So, as you make your decision about who to support, you need to think about that. Is healthcare important to you? And if it is, you need to think about which candidate. Now, we are we're a nonpartisan organization, so I don't need to tell you how to vote, okay? 
but we need to think about which candidate is the best candidate for you, for the Latino community, for your interest. Okay? Don't be dissuaded by the airways. The commercials are negative. Personally, I'm tired. I think that I'll be glad when November 6 comes because I see the commercials and they try to make the other guy look bad. That's all it is. And that's why I'm glad we're having this forum because we will be able to talk to the candidates directly about what their position is. Okay? This is an opportunity for us to get it directly, firsthand, from the candidates. I urge all the students, especially, <coughs> analyze the positions, research the candidates, make decisions based on facts, not on lies and information that you see from the commercials. Bottom line is that the more informed you are, the better decision you're going to make. And I'll tell you one thing. In the end, the electorate deserves the people they elect. So take this decision seriously. Thank you for your time.